Greetings, I'm Helen, a 34-year-old woman. I was fortunate to experience a life of comfort, thanks to my father's success as a businessman. Despite enjoying the finer things life had to offer, it's essential to clarify that my privilege doesn't equate to snobbery. I understood the value of humility. I was more than just a pampered individual. Regrettably, the moment my name was uttered, assumptions flooded in. People would quickly turn away, labeling me as just another entitled rich kid. Witnessing the swift judgments without an attempt to know the real me was disheartening. Consequently, I often found myself devoid of genuine friendships, surrounded by envy instead of authentic connections. Loneliness and a yearning for meaningful relationships became familiar emotions. Enter Matthew, a pivotal figure in my life. Our meeting sparked something special, leading us to marriage after a whirlwind romance of only five months. Yes, it may sound imprudent, but it was a love story reminiscent of those seen in movies. For the first time, I truly understood the depth of love and clung to it with all my might. Matthew became my anchor, my partner in crime, and my rock in this unpredictable world. Yet as life goes, it's never smooth sailing. Alongside my newfound happiness came the intricate task of navigating family dynamics. Matthew's parents, Jerry and Elizabeth, weren't entirely thrilled with our relationship. They harbored reservations rooted in stereotypes associated with my background. I empathized with their concerns, understanding their desire to shield their son from potential heartache or the pitfalls of an opulent lifestyle. However, it pained me to witness their judgment without truly knowing who I was as a person. I longed for their acceptance and endeavored to prove that I was more than just a pampered girl. The trajectory of my life took an unforeseen turn, starting on a particular day, three months after Matthew and I united. I received an unexpected call from Elizabeth Matthew's mother on a sunny afternoon, catching me off guard with her usually cheerful tone. I sensed something unexpected was coming. After exchanging pleasantries, Elizabeth dropped a bombshell. She and Jerry had saved up for a luxurious getaway and wanted me to join them. Feeling the anticipation in their voices, I impulsively offered to take care of all the expenses to please Elizabeth and gain her favor. Elizabeth was initially hesitant, insisting it was too much, but I insisted, expressing my love for them and my desire for them to enjoy the trip without any financial concerns. Elizabeth, appreciative of the gesture, shared details about the trip with palpable joy. With me covering the costs, they assured me not to worry about the nitty-gritty, and they would plan the itinerary. As we hung up, the excitement for the upcoming trip filled our days. Matthew and I eagerly discussed the activities we would enjoy, resembling the excitement of kids going to Epcot. In a moment of extravagance, I even splurged on first-class tickets for a stylish and comfortable journey. The much-anticipated day arrived, and we found ourselves immersed in the breathtaking beauty of Spain, vibrant colors, bustling markets, and the promise of an extraordinary adventure. The rich culture of Spain immediately captivated us all. It was the first international trip for Matthew, Jerry, and Elizabeth, and their amazement was contagious. Despite having been to Spain before, I found myself falling in love with the place once again. With my previous experience, I eagerly took on the role of a tour guide, determined to show them the best spots and immerse them in the local culture. We explored the stunning Montserrat, and I couldn't help but gush about the beautiful cuisine. Initially, everything seemed great. Matthew, Jerry, and Elizabeth appeared appreciative, and we were having a wonderful time. However, the mood took a sudden turn when we arrived at the luxurious Gold Star Hotel that Elizabeth had planned and booked. As I began unpacking in the hotel room, Jerry surprised me by suggesting that I wouldn't be staying with them in this fancy hotel. Confused, I asked for an explanation, thinking he was joking. Matthew tightened his grip on my arm, signaling me to hold on, and Elizabeth, with a smirk, revealed their plan. According to them, the five-star hotel was exclusively for them, while they had booked a motel online for me. My jaw dropped in disbelief. I turned to Matthew for answers, but he remained silent. Frustration surged within me as I desperately sought to comprehend their twisted reasoning. Why are you doing this? I asked. Elizabeth and Jerry wasted no time explaining that they never liked me, thinking I was too full of myself. This, they claimed, was their way of teaching me a lesson in humility. According to them, I had been spoiled for too long and needed to be humbled. I protested insisting that I meant no harm and was simply trying to be kind by covering the expenses of the luxury trip. The accusation of showing off my wealth baffled me, and I struggled to comprehend the sudden shift in their attitude. Oh, Helen, it's evident that your preoccupation with wealth is quite apparent. What's the matter with all of you? Do you genuinely believe you're superior to the rest of us? With your affluent father and his extravagant finances, 
Have you ever considered what would happen if he were to lose everything? You'd be left with nothing. I could no longer contain the wellspring of frustration within me. Seriously? Throughout my life, I've maintained a grateful attitude, steering clear of any hint of superiority. My only desire was to treat my family to a getaway. Is there something wrong with that? Jerry and Elizabeth flaunted smug expressions, reveling in their perceived triumph. Their contempt for me permeated the air, driving them to extraordinary lengths to diminish me, heedless of the pain they caused. I turned to Matthew. Momentarily, remorse flickered in his eyes. Dismissing him with a shrug, I declared, You're all acting foolishly. I suppose I was foolish too for placing trust in any of you. Consumed by frustration and anger, I grabbed my belongings and exited the hotel room with the force of a storm. My emotions were boiling over. How could they treat me with such blatant disrespect? As I made my way to the lobby, my phone chimed with a message from Elizabeth. Can you fathom her nerve, sending me specifics about the dismal hotel they arranged for me? I couldn't handle it. In that very moment, I blocked all four of them. I refused to allow that negativity to linger in my life. Marooned in the hotel lobby, overwhelmed with a sense of defeat, I made my way to the front desk, yearning for an alternative accommodation. Regrettably, every room was occupied. What a bitter pill to swallow. Distressed and without a clear plan, I settled into the lobby, tears flowing down my cheeks. In that instance of hopelessness, I resolved to dial my dad's number and lay bare my emotions to him. I revisited every aspect, starting from the disorganized booking process to being left alone in the lobby. He attentively heard my account, his voice filled with empathy. My dear, I apologize for the distressing experience you went through. I've consistently urged you to be cautious in matters of marriage, particularly given our financial situation. There are often opportunistic individuals seeking to exploit us. I get it, Dad. It's just that I thought Matthew was different. I believed he truly loved me. I feel naive now. People can be disappointing, Al. It's a tough lesson to learn, but it doesn't define who you are. Yeah, I suppose you're right. The pain is just hard to bear. I understand, sweetheart. But always remember, you're a resilient individual. This setback won't keep you down for long. You possess strength, and you'll undoubtedly overcome it. Thanks, Dad. Your words mean a lot to me right now. On a different note, my father asked, Which hotel are you staying at? It's the Gold Star Hotel, but unfortunately, they're fully booked. If you wanted, you could easily clear the place out. I know. But why should I inconvenience others? They deserve to enjoy their stay, even if some thoughtless individuals kicked me out. After all, I paid for the room. Gold Star, you mentioned. Hold tight, sweetheart. Let me verify something. He placed me on a brief hold, and upon his return, his voice was brimming with enthusiasm. Inform those fools to vacate my hotel. Your hotel? What do you mean? Turns out I'm the owner. What? How is that even possible? It's a humorous tale. I was gambling. Despite your advice to quit, I assure you it was just a one-time thing. Anyway, I was engaged in a game, and my inebriated friend, completely unaware, ended up wagering his hotel. We strongly cautioned him against proceeding, but he remained deaf to our advice. Helen, my Spain friend, is associated with the Gold Star Hotel in question. When I learned of this, I was left speechless, grappling with how to respond. It felt like an unexpected twist of fate, a fortunate coincidence, akin to a carefully orchestrated chess move. Presuming you've won, Helen has always been your stance. I can practically hear the smirking confidence in your voice through the phone. I'm at a loss for words. It's utterly absurd. I neglected to follow up with him regarding the transfer of ownership, and this incident occurred about three months ago. When I finally called him, placing you on hold, your insanity became apparent. No wonder people perceive us as snobbish. That's just the nature of the game. Now go and expel those buffoons from my hotel. Thanks, Dad. Don't mention it, sweetheart. Enjoy the luxury you deserve during your time in Spain, and capture the moment when you reveal the truth to them in a photograph. I couldn't express my gratitude enough to my dad for his support, and this unexpected turn of events. It felt like a beacon of hope in the midst of darkness. As I ended the call, a surge of resilience and determination enveloped me, ready to make the most of my time in Spain, armed with my dad's love and support. I marched back to the hotel room where Elizabeth, Matthew, and Jerry were staying, my anger fueled my determination as I knocked on the door, demanding their attention. Matthew opened the door, surprised to see me, but I didn't give him a chance to speak. I'm coming in, whether you like it or not, I declared as I barged into the room. Elizabeth started screaming, questioning my presence and reminding me that they had already kicked me out. 
She thinks she can waltz in here like she owns the place, she exclaimed. Actually, I kind of do. Get a load of this. Are you so spoiled that you believe every luxurious thing belongs to you? I triumphantly declared. What did I tell you guys? I was right all along. If you don't leave, expect consequences. I must call for security assistance. A billionaire's daughter being escorted out by security. Quite embarrassing. Elizabeth, there's no need to contact security. They're already present. At that instant, the security guards who accompanied me entered, swiftly collecting everyone's belongings and dispersing them in the hallway. Bewildered and concerned, Jerry exclaimed, What is happening here? Capitalizing on the opportune moment, I opted to disclose my ace in the hole. Guess what? My dad happens to be the owner of this hotel. So, bid farewell to your posh suite because I don't appreciate the elaborate plan you concocted to trap me. What? That's unbelievable! Jerry objected. In the kind of lifestyle I lead, such occurrences aren't too far-fetched. You're going to face the consequences, kid. I've already faced them. I don't receive any special privileges. I'm just a paying customer who forked out for this room. Helen, really? Now you want to come crawling back? It's too little, too late, Helen. We know nothing about Spain. Where are we supposed to go? Unfortunately, that's not my problem. Maybe you can stay in that motel you arranged for me. I doubt that single bed can accommodate all four of you, though. Perhaps three of you can manage on the floor. You're a monster, Jerry. It's all of you who are the monsters. You treated me terribly, and you thought I'd just let you off the hook. You're even more foolish than you appear, Helen. I'm so sorry, Matthew. I trusted you guys, and now I regret it. Enjoy your time in Spain or don't. I don't care. And Matthew, I need those divorce papers signed ASAP. Once I send them to you, I can't bear the thought of being connected to any of you in any way after what happened today. Elizabeth sobbed uncontrollably, and despite Jerry's attempt to restrain himself from yelling at the guards, he was overpowered by the bulky security team, who quickly subdued him. Leading them out of the room, I walked alongside them while Jerry couldn't resist making a snide remark, branding me as a spoiled brat. My anger boiled over, and impulsively I spat in his face. You know what, Jerry? You can all go to hell. Elizabeth, Matthew, and Jerry were unceremoniously expelled from the hotel, their faces mirroring humiliation as security ushered them away. After several hours, stranded by the roadside, they frantically scoured Google for available hotels. Their attempts to reach me were in vain, given that I had blocked their numbers, leaving them with no choice but to resort to sending desperate emails outlining their struggles to secure accommodations. Despite reading their apologies, I had no inclination to involve myself in their pleas for forgiveness. Updating my dad on the unfolding situation, I conveyed, Dad, you won't believe what I'm witnessing right now. I can spot Elizabeth, Matthew, and Jerry from my window. They seem lost and helpless, likely on the hunt for a hotel for quite some time now. Expressing surprise at the delay, I questioned, I'm amazed that it's taken them this long. He responded enigmatically, Well, my dear, about that. Concerned, I asked, Oh God, Dad, what did you do? Taking matters into his own hands, he disclosed, I reached out, pulled some strings, and got their names added to a blacklist, making it nearly impossible for them to secure a reservation at a reputable hotel. Skeptical, I remarked, Dad, that seems a bit excessive, doesn't it? They've already faced the consequences of their actions. He justified his actions, asserting, It may be extreme, but no one messes with my child. They thought they could play with you and cause you pain. They needed a lesson, and I made sure they got one. They won't be forgetting this anytime soon. Dad, I value your protective nature, but I hope you didn't go overboard. I don't want them to endure prolonged suffering. Rest assured, dear. They'll grasp the message unmistakably. Occasionally, people require a dose of their own medicine to comprehend the consequences of their actions. Believe me, it's for their own good. I can't deny the satisfaction of witnessing them facing challenges. However, let's aspire for them to learn and amend their ways. I don't want this to permanently shape their identity. May they take a moment to reflect on their actions and embrace positive changes. Meanwhile, bask in the well-earned tranquility. Thanks, Dad. You're always the best. To my dearest, remember your strength, resilience, and deserving nature for happiness. Don't let anyone undermine you. Fate played its hand, and Elizabeth, Matthew, and Jerry found themselves back at the very same worn-out motel they initially booked for me. The irony is hard to miss. Despite their plotting, they now experience the discomfort they had intended for me. It must have been a bitter realization, and a sense of satisfaction couldn't help but wash over me. I found myself alone in the expansive hotel suite that we were meant to share, and it felt somewhat surreal. On hand, there was a liberating sense of freedom, 
as if I could indulge in any whim. Yet simultaneously, the opulent surroundings couldn't dispel a touch of loneliness. Sitting in that lavish room, thoughts of the unfolding events and how I arrived at this solitary moment lingered. As the days unfolded in the luxurious hotel suite, a hint of loneliness persisted. Nevertheless, I realized that being alone was far superior to being surrounded by insincere individuals and their toxic energy. In a moment of profound clarity, I came to the realization that I was deserving of something better. A few days later, I summoned the courage to dispatch the divorce papers to Matthew. Surprisingly, he attempted to reconcile, pleading for another chance. However, I was no longer swayed by his efforts. I recognized my worth beyond his hollow promises and lies. My resolve was set, and I was determined to relish my time in Spain without his presence. Upon returning home, having invested my hard-earned money in Spain, I purged myself of all reminders of Matthew. Indifferent to whether he and his family chose to retreat from the chaos they had caused, I had come to the understanding that life held so much more than seeking validation from those unworthy of a place in my world. Embracing my newfound freedom, I focused on constructing a life authentic to myself. Surrounding myself with positive influences, I pursued my passions, releasing toxic relationships and placing value on myself each day. With each passing day, I grew stronger and more empowered. The scars from the past gradually healed, unveiling a newfound love for myself. I learned that authentic happiness stems from within, not from seeking validation from others. Spain bestowed upon me invaluable lessons that I carried forward in life with unwavering determination and a genuine smile on my face. Leaving behind toxicity, I embraced a future adorned with self-love and authenticity, taking the next steps towards my own happiness.